In continuing to provide you with quality products and service, we have created this video to acquaint you with the preparation and maintenance of the Royce Model 94 or Model 95 dissolved oxygen sensor. This is the Model 94 sensor. The sensor is a galvanic cell which produces a voltage that is proportional to the rate at which oxygen diffuses through a Teflon membrane stretched across the face of the sensor. This is the interior of the Model 94 sensor, the assembly that we refer to in our literature as the probe body. At the end of the probe body, there are two platinum cathodes. The center platinum disc actually performs the oxygen measurement. The outer platinum ring helps to recondition the sensor electrolyte during our patented self-cleaning cycle. And it also serves to quicken the sensor's downscale response time when applying the sensor for use at very low oxygen levels. There are two lead anodes on the Model 94 sensor. The shorter lead coil is connected internally to the platinum ring and serves to aid reconditioning and response time. The longer lead coil anode actually performs the measurement task. This lead coil is oxidized, and it is this oxidation that will produce the voltage for the analyzer to sense. This is the interior of the Model 95 sensor. It differs in that it has only one platinum cathode and one lead anode. This sensor is not intended for use in electrochemical self-cleaning applications or low-level parts per billion dissolved oxygen measurements. If the Model 94 sensor is to be used in low-level or parts per billion applications, remove any gold or silver jewelry from the hands before beginning to disassemble the sensor. Gold or silver contamination can cause slight voltage offsets in the sensor output at oxygen levels near zero. The first step in disassembling the sensor is to loosen the vent port screw three or four turns using a small flat-bladed screwdriver. Do not remove the screw completely, as it is quite small and easily lost. Loosening this screw will allow air or electrolyte to enter or escape from the interior of the sensor through the vent port located here. The next step is to remove the stainless steel retaining cap that holds the probe body to the sensor canister. Using your thumb placed against the membrane surface for leverage, the probe body can be partially dislodged from the canister. The probe body may now be completely retracted, as you see here. Be careful not to use excessive force on the sensor cable. Always discard the used electrolyte. Next, remove the membrane retaining cap located here at the end of the canister. Discard the old membrane. Once a membrane has been installed and stretched into position, it cannot be used again reliably. Remove the small O-ring that is located at the end of the canister beneath the membrane. Be careful not to lose this part. Now that the sensor has been disassembled, all parts should be cleaned thoroughly under running tap water. A toothbrush and a damp cloth or paper toweling is all that is normally necessary to do a thorough job. All loose debris should be cleaned away completely. The lead anode should never be cleaned down to the bare metal. The lead should at least have a light coating of oxidation, as you see here. This light oxidation is beneficial to the stability of the sensor. At this point, inspect the port vent holes to be certain that they are not clogged with debris. A paper clip wire can be used to clean the port if necessary. Using a medium flat blade screwdriver, tighten the two screws that retain the lead anode to the probe body. These screws will loosen under normal use. It is important that these screws fit tightly not only so that a good electrical connection is made, but also so that they will not interfere with the fit between the probe body and the canister. Inspect the platinum cathodes. They should be completely clean. The surface of the platinum must be completely free of dents or deep scratches, but it should not be highly polished. A light pattern of concentric scratches should be visible across the surface. These slight grooves provide room for electrolyte between the membrane and the platinum surface. If the platinum surface could not be completely cleaned using a paper towel and water, the surface should be cleaned as demonstrated here. 
Use clean 220 or 300 grit wet dry emery paper and twist the sensor three or four times using a clean spot on the paper each time. Rinse away the dust from the tip of the sensor when you are done. We begin reassembly of the sensor by first lubricating the membrane O-ring lightly, but completely, with a silicone-based lubricant. The O-ring may then be placed on the end of the sensor canister. Lubricate the O-ring at the other end of the canister, where the probe body is sealed, also using silicone-based lubricant. After cleaning the lubricant from your fingertips, select a new membrane from the box. Never use tweezers to handle these membranes. Pinhole size leaks will cause the sensor to act erratically. Handle the membrane by the edges to avoid getting oils on the center of the membrane. The brown paper dividers that separate the membranes in the box can be used to help lay the membrane down in the membrane retaining cap, as you see here. Once the membrane has been pushed all of the way down into the cap, it should remain in place. Discard the brown paper. Once the membrane is in place, screw the retaining cap down onto the sensor canister until it is snug. Do not use pliers to tighten this cap. Invert the canister and fill it about one-third full of electrolyte. Be sure the electrolyte is clear. If not, be sure to follow the instructions on the label of the electrolyte bottle. Tap the sides of the canister to dislodge any air bubbles that may be trapped at the membrane. These bubbles can easily be seen when viewed from above. Begin inserting the sensor body into the canister. Push the two parts together until the O-ring forms its seal. Be careful not to cover the vent port with your fingers so that air and electrolyte may escape without ballooning the membrane. Unless the sensor will be used in a pressurized application, it is desirable to trap a small quantity of air inside the sensor. When held at the angle you see here, an air bubble that is roughly the size of a quarter should be trapped inside the sensor. With the vent port facing upward, excess air can be vented from the sensor. Once the proper size air bubble is achieved, rotate the vent port down so that the electrolyte is vented while the two pieces are completely joined. Be sure to align the keyway in the canister with the body. Do not force the two parts together suddenly or the membrane may balloon. Once the two parts are completely joined, tighten the retaining cap by hand. Once the sensor is completely assembled, this is roughly the size of the air bubble that is most desirable. Inspect the surface of the membrane. It should be perfectly smooth and free of all wrinkles. To check the membrane for pinhole size leaks, first dab the membrane dry with a paper towel. Next, wrap the sides of the sensor with your hand a few times. Now check the membrane again. If droplets of electrolyte have appeared, you may have a pinhole leak. If so, you must reassemble the sensor to install a new membrane. As the final step of the sensor assembly, tighten the vent screw. Do not over-tighten this screw. It is only necessary to bring it down until it makes contact internally.